this is Chetan here from the Monk Realty Show and today we are back with another uh, amazing guest based out of Paris. Uh, today we have uh, Mr. Jose uh, who is a co-founder for uh, Community. It's a design firm which helps co-living operators make their dreams come live. So Mr. Jose, why don't you take it ahead from here? Hi, hello everybody. Uh, thank you very much Chetan for, for your invitation. Um, it's been great uh, speaking to you the other day and knowing what you're doing. Again, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, from community, it's a, not only design, but we also do consultancy firm. So actually, it's what we try to cover is the whole process of developing a co-living. And we actually have developed also a few co-livings already in Spain, in Madrid particularly. And now we are moving into other countries, to so the cities, into also innovation projects in the real estate sectors in general, yeah. So uh, right now, I think uh, because of COVID-19, I think everything would have come to an halt right now. It has, yeah. I mean, uh, from the sourcing start, uh, standpoint, so actually from analyzing new assets and seeing what we could do on the close future, yeah, it's pretty much frozen. Uh, however, from the innovation side, uh, our clients, which are mainly investors, has been pretty much active. They've been pretty much active asking us how we see the sector, what do we think is going to change in the close future, in the middle and in the long term. And uh, so actually it's been frozen on the sourcing side, but uh, yeah. pretty much a lot of work on the innovation and thinking out of the box side. Oh. Yeah. So actually, even I would like to add a point here that uh, uh, we thought that the, even when it comes to our business, the flow would stop. But what we are seeing is that a lot of clients have lot of time to invest their time in tech so that's pretty great uh, so now the one great thing when it comes to a design part what i would like to understand is uh, how do, how does your design process work let's say that a client reaches out to you uh, a co-living operator and reaches out to you and says that okay now i have a bare shell and how does exactly the process start for you yeah sure uh, let me show you a quick slide that we have prepared so actually what we do is, uh, as, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, we don't only cover the design, but also all the other development side from a real estate standpoint. So actually also the investing. And this means that we need to cover the design within a, a pretty much analytic uh, perspective uh, okay. in which we start by an analysis phase and we put all the inputs that are gonna cover the design phase. So actually, we start from the data, which could be population data in order to define what could be the best claim for the location. Then we have the real estate data for sure that will provide us, okay, how it should the Colivin uh, model and asset, how it's going to perform in this environment. Data-driven design is something that um, it's pretty much something that we have started because of uh, being able to develop a few Colivins, co-working uh, and also uh, another type of innovation projects in, in the sector. So we're okay. taking the da data that we are collecting from some of the buildings and, and put it into into the box of the data and see oh. how can we improve the newest design. So, so actually then we have the architecture inputs that will be basically what's the building, what's the location, what's the urban planning. And uh, pretty much urban planning is something that lets you do A, B, C. So sometimes okay. uh, specifically in Colivin that something that has not been defined pretty much in the urban planning. So you need to be pretty much creative and, uh, and think about how can I do or design and execute a co-living uh, okay. within these urban planning inputs that we have, uh, particularly in the European countries. And then the building, which is pretty much the most flexible thing compared to the, to the urban planning, because you can okay change the design based on the structure that you have and if it's a new development then this is what we're thinking about these days when we are designing a new uh, 15,000 square meters co-living oh, with uh, 500 cool. units you oh. need to think about uh, a little bit different compared to uh, repositioning uh, a, an actual asset oh, okay. and then we have the agents involved uh, as we work basically either with investors or an operator we need to take the inputs into account and think about okay if it's the operator what's the brand uh what are the type of clients users that they're gonna target uh how they're gonna how how they would like to have the space design etc so with the operator it's pretty much a co-design phase um okay. and um with the investor is pretty much uh 
making the uh, the operation being uh, economically feasible and saying okay mm -hmm. it makes sense investing into cold living okay. and then we have the user that mm -hmm. at the beginning is an input but then when we come into the design it becomes the center of the design um all these data that we put all together will make the product development that we call uh we don't want to call it product design because it's actually really a development and is the way we think it's covering the whole phases uh, so therefore we have uh, one of the things that we usually produce when we're doing the product development is the okay. architecture and design of course and also the user report i mean i think this gave me a great outlook onto uh, how actually someone uh, starts with their designing process now i have one more point which i want to ask you out here is like how can we achieve a great design keeping our cost low that's what every operator thinks of and that's what even i have in my mind yeah that's that's probably one of the most tricky things and that's why we uh, we wanted to have also an holistic approach thinking about the investing side but also on the design phase uh, on the design side um, and it's pretty much uh, or the, uh, we wanted to focus a little way more on, into this because we saw that at the end of the day you need to be uh, pretty much sure of how much uh, are you going to invest in the building to make okay. it work the problem about investing uh, $3,000 per square meter is okay. that um, that's gonna make you put a price that is very expensive, and that's okay. what is happening with uh, the large co-working high-end operators. Is that yes, yes. they did very great spaces, cool spaces, a lot of design, but then they need to densify a lot to cover all these uh, expenses. Yes, uh, yes. And at okay. the same time, they need to put prices that are very, very expensive. And yeah. For co-working, maybe you can tolerate these having these uh, uh, high-end uh, spaces. But okay. for co-living, it's about residential, and residential it's about affordability and yeah. uh, accessibility. It's about uh, people pay out of their pocket uh, sure. the rent, and it's not sure. the same as paying from the company side exactly. the rent. Uh, not, <laughs> not only that you cannot recover taxes, but also yeah. that you need to pay it from your pocket, and and yeah. and you're gonna see it differently. And when you're thinking about this, is what it makes Colin pretty much uh, a pain in the ass when you when you when you're doing all these all these uh, design phases because you would love to do a high end investing and saying what's a great space, etc. <laughs> That's true. But then uh, the investor are gonna tell you, yeah, but then the the rent is needs to be double, and then yeah. you say, okay, it's not gonna work because our clients are not are not be are not gonna be able to pay double. True. And this is something that, uh, of course, we are really at the beginning of this trend, uh, even though it's established trend and it's all, almost been institu institutionalized. Uh, mm -hmm. We are still at the beginning and we're still learning. And this means that um, uh, probably we need to think about design uh, always with the uh, uh, money behind thinking, like saying, yeah. okay, what could be the most? And for this, it's not that much that you need to save money, it's that you need to invest what is precisely what you need to invest uh, for the client that you're gonna target, for yeah. the building that you are uh, that you are executing your co-living space. And this makes, uh, probably then you have a lot of uh, strategies. So for instance, yeah. we work directly with manufacturer and brands. We don't wanna yeah. have uh, people in the middle uh, getting money out of the buying and selling materials. We go yeah, directly yeah. to the manufacturer and we say, okay, we're gonna need this, uh, these X materials, X yeah. square meters of wood for the flooring and then uh, these appliances and we, for, with this, within these strategies we managed to save some money True. Uh, but always thinking about okay am i spending too much am i spending too low and um and uh, of course uh, probably you need to go from top to bottom and think about okay i'm starting with the space what is the densification rate that i can provide here what is the typology of common spaces how much is common spaces do i need and then you go into investing saying okay what's the materials that i need uh what's probably furniture is where you go into the higher and lower quality materials okay. at the end of the day the general materials the flooring or the general installations you need to go i wouldn't say to the top you need mm -hmm. to go to materials that are durable and uh 
low maintenance uh, cost. Sure, uh, sure. Something that could, could also be replaced pretty much quickly. And yeah. then you learn a lot, a lot from hotels when you see them okay. changing a hotel in a few months, <laughs> completed oh. the design of a hotel yeah, in a yeah, few yeah. months. You need to think with the same, with, the, with probably with the same perspective. Okay. And then the furniture, the furniture. The, the the problem with furniture is that it's pretty much uh, local. Uh, you don't want to buy furniture from even in the European Union. You probably tend to go to the local country, local city to buy this uh, furniture. Uh, even though if you are a large operator, using local furniture is a good for the environment, but at the same time, it's also good because it will provide a local image to, to the space. Um, so therefore, furniture is uh, pretty much where you need to think about what's the end user, am I using the furniture is provide better and suitable for this location, etc. And uh, okay. something that is uh, durable uh, or again, low maintenance, uh, but not very ultra expensive uh, because it's not gonna, it, it would probably make Colibin not affordable at all. Correct, correct. So it might wear off for soon. So it's better to go locally is what you're trying to say. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, now moving on to like the next questions that I have is, see, of course, there are a lot of co-living operators who have come into the market, uh, but there are few would have who have done really well, few who would have done really bad, but still everyone's running a business. So when you look at all these operators and the buildings they have set up, uh, with your design perspective, what do you think is being done wrong when it comes to a co-living space? The, the operators, uh, what they're facing, uh, probably on a daily basis, is how to uh, how to work with uh, large scale, which is going to make uh, econ- numbers uh, go better uh, mm-hmm. versus the community. And in this yeah. case, we have uh, different typologies. So probably, if we go to the more traditional ones, uh, probably uh, more the ones coming also from the student housing is that we are going to have buildings where we have, uh, so in green we see the common areas. Okay. Um, so buildings that we have uh, on the ground level and probably a little bit more also on the first floor, common mm. areas, concentrated. Okay. So at the entrance you have the restaurant, the F&B, gym, everything. And then you have uh, on the rooftop. But in the okay. middle you're going to have all the residential units. Uh, okay. Traditionally, are going to be fully equipped studios, uh, either with kitchen or the kitchen can be shared by one or two uh, persons, maybe up to four people. But they're going to be pretty much designed as a hotel. And this is coming also from the regulation and the urban planning. So you go to a hotel uses and then you, you tend to feed all the, your units to make it work. Okay. But our view on this is that it's pretty much difficult to make a, a, a community. I mean, you're having independent studios. You have yeah. a, what we call the corridor effect because you're going to go into the, the building and you're going to see a long corridor and then you're going to see like a tens of tons of units on, on the left yeah. and on the right. Uh, uh, you have barriers between people. Uh, when you get out of your apartment, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a corridor. So the corridor, yeah. the corridor will will it's a path that you will use to go to place a or b which will be probably exiting the building or one of the common areas and on the common areas a common area is pretty much designed for like uh, i don't know 40 people 50 people 60 people oh. 100 people and this is very this uh, works very well with the numbers at the beginning mm-hmm. um okay. But at the end of the day, the co-working is uh, what, what we see with these type of models is, is that you have a, a higher rotation because actually okay. people tend to stay less time here uh, mm. because actually it, it's pretty much not so much. You don't have this home feeling uh, in these type of spaces. Uh, so again, it's, we st- we're still learning on the, on the co-living. So, uh, uh, it's probably uh, a way of uh, we need to try things and probably things will work well, better than the other ones. And these type of uh, models work very well on the Excel uh, and on the short term rentals. Uh, however, for long term and high occupancy rates, it's, it's pretty much difficult to, to fit in. Oh, okay. Okay. But then we have also a model that could be pretty much the same. Uh, mm-hmm. However, you start putting. Um, uh, common areas 
even on the floor per floor uh, and oh, then okay. say you know okay we we still have these uh, units and this corridor effect but yeah. uh, we still have like a we could create micro communities because say that per floor sure, we have sure. a living room of uh, uh, of uh, 16 people or something like that. So actually you have um, these micro communities that are being oh, okay. created per floor uh, and therefore the barriers between people are, be, uh, they, they, they are a little bit blurry um, but still you have this uh, huge building with uh, 500 people living all together with uh, small communities but they can again are very big communities so oh, okay. it's a, it's i think it's better in terms of design but it still needs to be improved however um it's a, it's something that the people will will have a little bit more of home feeling here sure and then we have uh, uh another model that it's uh, it's it's coming also from uh, spanish a building uh, architectural model that it's uh, a corrala, okay. which is actually you have the corridor on the central patio, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, so the corridor the corridor distributes the units, uh, and then you have common areas also per floor. Oh, so okay. in this case, what is great is that when you are in your apartment, you go to the corridor, and the corridor is a common area. It's it's uh, okay. it's in the patio. So it's actually uh, what you're making here is the. Um, um, making the horizontal and vertical communications of the building, okay. making them a common space. Uh, and this okay. makes that, uh, so actually it's something that we always say on, on the firm is that uh, on the late years, uh, what we have done is uh, putting the staircase hidden on, uh, on the worst part of the building. So the staircase is not being used at all. People use the okay. lift. Oh, okay. But we love a staircase. We think a staircase is a common space of the building. We love people encouraging them, uh, taking the staircase and saying, uh, and it's something that we've done in the first co-living spaces. It's uh, making the staircase part of the common area of the building. So making oh. people uh, see each other and encouraging them uh, taking the staircase instead of the lift. Uh, so actually it's good for energy consumption, but oh, it's also yeah, good it's because because people actually meet each other on the staircase um, and with this, this model is something that we are t we, we try to use it we try to uh, uh, execute it as much as we can however it's a little bit more complicated okay uh, but here we have a, a little bit more of a, a small uh, big communities uh, with uh, then a huge community for the whole building uh, so at the end of the day the we don't have that much of barriers between uh, one people and the other one. Uh, people could meet each other on the corridor. It's your enhancing interactions. Correct. correct and lastly, correct. will be the flat sharing model that we have clusters uh, that will, uh, th this cluster will be on the same building. And okay. in this case, uh, it's probably the best uh, scenario for communities uh, because actually you're making micro co livings per apartment. Uh, and in this case, you need to think about the hierarchy between the different common spaces. So you will have the, or the different, I would say is something that we call the hierarchy between communities. So you have your small community of your apartment, you have the community per floor, and then the community for the building. And this generates the different common spaces, uh, the community per, uh, per apartment, uh, sorry, the common space per apartment, the common space per floor, and the common space per building. Oh. And this is something that works very well. Uh, I mean, I think it's one of the models that we like the most. Uh, okay. However, you have uh, less privacy than the previous model. So operators, uh, so at the end of the day, and to give you a conclusion is operators are still learning. And uh, of course, we all make mistakes. Um, sure. It's, it's we're still learning. And that's yeah, part yeah. of the process, making mistakes. <laughs> that's that's uh, true. But they, they are models that fit better than other ones. But still, you have all the inputs that we spoke at the beginning that are going to let you do one building or, or the other one. Okay, okay. So uh, now I would like to understand, see, when it comes to India, uh, we have... Uh, so it is pretty common in India that sharing a room is a very pretty common norm. But when it comes to... Uh, 
when you say uh, Western countries or US or European countries, sharing a room does not make sense. So <laughs> what happens here is, let's say that you have got an Indian client and uh, you, he says that, okay, I, I would like to uh, set up a place where I want to put four people and it's pretty true that there are a lot of setups here in India where four people stay. So when you have to design these kind of places, uh, let's say that I give you a room and I'll tell you based on uh, one person is going to stay, two people are going to stay or four people are going to stay. So how does it differ for you or when you have to design it for a co-living or a student housing or a senior living, how does it differ for you? Like what all would differ when it comes to designing these places? Pretty much you answer at the same time uh, from the beginning is <laughs> student housing, senior housing and co-living are three different type of clients yeah. people walking retired yeah. people and uh, people student uh, st that are student uh, so actually this makes probably the way you need to face it from the beginning is uh, i cannot uh, uh, of course flattery model works very well with the with the um, students and a little bit more with the colleagues okay. but probably with the mix the if we if we, if we Range them from a student housing then to into co-living and then senior housing. Um, what we are gonna see is the more privacy level. Uh, so probably students they don't care that much or, or care a little bit less of sharing a bathroom. Uh, okay. When we see uh, on the co-living side, people will like less to share the bathroom, and probably on the senior living side, they don't want to share a bathroom at all. Sure, sure. Uh, kitchen could be pretty much the, the same thing is okay you could do uh, the kitchen and the student side will probably be, be a mess yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you need to implement rules uh, however I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much surprised of uh, when you doing things well and the design is good and um, and you you provide them quality appliances uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying expensive I'm just saying quality appliances mm -hmm. uh, they tend to use them well uh, pretty much all people tend to behave the same thing on the student housing pretty much people if you're providing them a, a, a good appliance they're not gonna destroy it because they are students not at all they're gonna take care of them um, but uh, so actually the difference uh, between uh, between the three of them is gonna come from the user and the level of, okay. of privacy uh, versus the level of community that they're gonna look for uh, okay. a student uh, there's also a little bit more rotation compared to co-living or compared to senior housing. On uh, yeah. The student may stay uh, two years, maybe, with a little bit of lag, there, there may be more rotation. However, on co-living, uh, these human interactions are going to be more required because people are going into co because they need these human interactions exactly. Exactly. because of the level of loneliness that we have on the cities. Uh, and then on senior housing, this level of interactions become pretty much a need uh, sure. because uh, senior people, uh, what is happening on, on the major cities is that oh, oh, we, the, the children, move away and then uh, sure. sometimes we live in, in different countries and we cannot yeah. see our fathers, our parents as much as we would love to. And then this makes uh, senior people living alone and the loneliness on the senior people is something that needs to be taken care of way more uh, into details and with an urgent perspective uh, way more than uh, on, on, on the other sectors probably. So one final thing, where do you see co-living uh, uh, in terms of design? Uh, as per your design perspective, where do you see the future of co-living? Of course, trends of co-living um, before coronavirus uh, yeah. and uh, after coronavirus may be different. That's, uh, that's for sure. True. Probably what we see about the uh, coronavirus uh, is that uh, all the trends that we expected are going to accelerate. Uh, okay. What we were expecting to happen in five years time okay. are probably going to happen in one year time. Uh, so working from home which mm -hmm. is probably the thing that we are all talking about these days. Sure. Uh, working from home is something that, yeah, we really expect it to happen in five yeah. years. 
now it is happening. It's this actually is, happening. <laughs> yeah, this is actually happening. Um, yeah. It's a test. We all been yeah. tested, and okay. uh, and see, and pretty much right after uh, the lockdown that we are having in May, you know, the cities in Europe, uh, people are gonna say, "Hey, I don't need to go to the office five days per week. Maybe I could right. go three days." Um, yeah. And this is going to have a huge impact into the co-living sector because uh, the reason or the need of uh, of making mixed use co-working and co-living mm -hmm. is gonna is gonna grow faster than we expected. Okay. Um, so actually, it's something that uh, that you need to think about. But also on the res traditional residential side, you need to think about having a space for work. Uh, it's going to be one of the amenities required by by people and it's going to be probably the most in co-living it was already one of the most required mm -hmm. uh, because you had at least this large community <coughs> of entrepreneurs um but now you're going to have people working for larger companies saying hey i'm going to stay at home at the co-living space for at the residence for two days per week so i need uh, and probably what we have expected in terms of the space for the co-working uh, we need to take this uh these hypotheses and uh, sure. we study them. So that's one of the major things. Uh, then technology is gonna go faster, probably. Okay. Uh, from uh, on the technology goes into different layers. So that's something that it's uh, pretty much what makes technology very, um, very interesting is that uh, it's it's a whole approach. Uh, on the investor side, you will have uh, using more platforms for, for property management, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, using models for facility or 3D models and B models for facility management, that's for sure. And then we will have also all these um, uh, uh, building apps for, for, for the users. And that's oh. something that people are going to require more uh, because uh, what is happening if you if you take a look at telecom companies these days mm -hmm. what they are astonished is how people have started to to download new apps yeah. uh, interact more with people <laughs> not only whatsapp for sure yeah. i mean whatsapp is probably the way of communicating for all of us exactly zoom zoom valuation has exploded in the last days yeah. in, in in the stock market Exactly. Because we're starting to use Zoom and uh, you, you see people changing the backgrounds. And exactly, doing all this yeah, stuff. I was going to add that, <laughs> so, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so I actually, do. all these things are going to have an impact into co-living. And uh, for sure, as a general trend, it's going to get institutionalized. Um, okay. It's not going to be any longer an alternative uh, investing. Okay. I think uh, after coronavirus, uh, residential or living in general, is gonna become something more institutionalized. Investors are gonna go there for the long term, and uh, and co-living is gonna grow. Uh, probably on the short term, it's gonna grow a little bit slower on only on the short term, but then faster on the mid term and long term because there are gonna be more opportunities. And probably we'll we'll have to learn. The the bad thing is that we'll have to learn faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to not make the same mistakes. Too. Jose, it was really amazing having you, the perspective you gave us, uh, the insights you gave us about the how the designing entirely works around the co-living. And before that, uh, before we end the show, I have two uh, small questions that I would like to ask. One is, I really want to know what is the craziest requirement a client came up to you with, like, uh, let it be any kind of client who came up to you with a crazy requirement. The thing is, we're usually the ones providing the crazy ideas. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's the ball is but the, so, the but, <laughs> No, but I think, uh, at the, I remember in 2017, I think it was, we were starting on the design phase for the first mm -hmm. call, call spaces. And uh, and then I was meeting with one operator and he told me, um, he told me, you need to do also on the Colibin spaces, a video podcast. And then, uh, Urban Campus, which is the operator that we uh, work with on the co-living and co-workings, uh, they actually said to us, yeah, uh, video podcast is something that they, people are doing a lot. Uh, okay. <laughs> probably was something that I wasn't expecting that much to be okay. an actual need in the building, uh, <laughs> a, a, an amenity. <laughs> awesome. So uh, moving to the second question, which 
book or a, a person or a podcast that you follow to like help you uh, with personal development or any kind of anything any book or anything that changed your life or anything you would like to uh, suggest our viewers these days i'm reading a lot um awesome. your podcast is something that i'm following a, a lot awesome. and specifically into colibin you have a a lot of um documents and associations and uh, and people reading about this uh me i'm more uh, these days i'm trying to read more about um general aspects of uh, how society is going to change uh and for that in that matter i'm also reading a book that is the fourth industrial revolution uh, okay. by close trap um so it's actually uh, so i'm trying to go into more generalistic things and then we read a lot about colibin uh but okay. we wanted to go into the generalistic things because it let us think about the uh with a 20 25 years uh time in horizon and not the 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 close so because when you're reading into colibin it's great but you're usually reading into what is happening now on on the five years time uh but at the same time you need to have also the perspective of what is going to happen in 20 25 years time and for that you need to read about the uh general economy changes in society etc which is uh amazing uh at the same time it's something that uh, none of us could expect what is going to happen in 25 years for sure yeah, but uh, you started to see trends and you're starting to read about okay mobility i, I love reading about mobility what is gonna the mobility change uh, uh so i actually also reading a book that is called um hop skip and go oh. uh, which is which talks, talks about uh mobility in the larger cities and uh, for, so, for instance, mobility is going to have an impact into Colibin probably and sure. uh, working from home would make also being able to develop Colibin in secondary and third cities uh, if mobility is improving uh, a lot in the, in the close future. That's great. That's great. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of books that you're reading. All I'm doing is reading Marvel comics and uh, there are some <laughs> Indian superhero comics as well. That's what I do. So, uh, keeping that all aside, it was really great having you on our show, Jose. And uh, we look forward to more and more uh, buildings coming up with community's name out on it. That designed by community, consulted by community. And we would love to have you on our show again soon. Have a great day and let's hope for uh, Corona to get over soon.